at any point when you were making this, did you think of having somebody else direct this, and then did you have to grab it back and think, no, I have to do this? Um, I, as I was writing it, I had, I wasn't really thinking, I, I, wasn't, I wasn't thinking about that. I had a very clear vision of, of what I was wanting it to be, um, uh, chiefly uh, that it would be a very warm film, and very generous, um, and but I because uh, what I envisioned was so clear. By that, when I was finished with it, I was frightened, but I felt that um, I I just wanted to do it because I so clearly had these feelings that I wanted to make sure it were translated in in the piece, and and that it wasn't going to be a uh, that it would be humorous, and that it would be um, not really not not. So sad. I felt like someone else might take it and make it really, really sad because there are so many sad elements in it. But I, I sort of thought I want to do a celebration of misery. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's a title for you. <laughs> uh, and about the title, so many people have commented on it. A critic I spoke to who loved it said, if there were one thing she could change, it would be the title. Where does it come from? Because I don't recall hearing the line, but it had to have come from one of you kids. Well, it, where it came from actually was my father, which was um, when I was in college. Uh, m uh, my father, I went. My sister and I were at Harvard. My father was uh, lived in Cambridge, and he was having a manic episode, and we felt that he should go to the hospital before it got out of control. We took him to McLean Hospital in Belmont, and he was filling out his intake form, and um, it said, "Have you ever been diagnosed with a mental illness? If so, what? You know, manic depression, bipolar, schizophrenia, schizophrenia, other." He circled other and wrote infinitely polar bear. And what struck me was that um, it's so hard to go through life with labels um, that uh, that tell you that there's something wrong with you. And as much as my father was open about being manic depressive, which was his the labor label he favored over bipolar. Um, it's still hard to to be burdened with that through life, and so it was sort of it was a way of giving himself a label for his condition that wasn't that didn't have sort of all these negative a clinical uh, yeah clinical that wasn't being told to him by somebody else. This is what you have. It was sort of this is no I I, I have infinitely polar bear. That's what I have. <laughs> you you have great comedy writing chops and credentials, and I'm wondering how that influenced this because a lot of the time. I know friends whose parents were horrible, and they would be thinking, I wish my dad were like that. That looks like fun. <laughs> well, the, what's funny to me is the clash between the father and the daughters. And also what's funny is that they don't, when he's running, you know, when they're running down the hall to get to school, they're all screaming down the hall, and, uh, you know, he's yelling for his daughter. And, and we were just so oblivious to the fact that people don't really like it when you're yelling and <laughs> screaming down the hall. <laughs> I mean, there were so many funny, when I was looking back at it, so many sort of funny, you know, when, when he gets the dog, you know, it, the girls love the dog, but for, for Maggie, you know, the fact that he's brought now a crazy dog into the mix is really not, uh, not, was not, is not a, um, a solution for the, what's going on in their marriage or anything. So there were, it was, it was the, perspective on all of those things, where the comedy comes from. I mean, certainly I feel that I got a tremendous amount of uh, gifts from, from my father, but it was also very hard. And one of the gifts that I got was how hard it was to care for somebody who has all these wonderful qualities but can't pull his life together. You know, and I felt like I, I, we always wanted to fix him. It was, you couldn't fix him. And um, so that there's a lot of um, pain and lessons in that, but um, I guess... In looking back at the movie, I felt that it had um, made me a se more uh, self-reliant person, a, a person capable of loving other people, and um, I'd learned a lot. You lived this in the first person, but you made the film in the third person. How different was that? What did you change, and how aware were you of things that you had to change to make this into a film? Well, um, it's not it's since you know it's, it would be different if I were writing a memoir. But obviously, a film is so collaborative, and and you're you're going to bring actors into it. And um, I sort of what happened for me was that I w uh, I was trying to figure out a way into the story. How why does this why is this man left these two daughters and with his daughters, and how do I explain this? And it was hard because that's it's a really crazy situation um and I thought should I is there a way should I be getting rid of the mother somehow or you know to just to make it 
uh, easy, palatable for people to understand. Um, but then that felt wrong because it was such an interesting part of the story, I felt, just in terms of what it had to say about uh, women and motherhood, gender roles, ambition, th that time, feminism, um, uh, race, because my mother is black, but I don't look black. And um, I just decided I was going to go for it on the big, all the big things, you know, the, 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 but the situation that with my parents' marriage or, and um, my father's manic depression, the fact that he's from this old money family, all these sort of big details, I thought, I'm going to be true to those. Then within, within it, uh, the story is me some memory, but it's also stories that were told to me by other, pe by, by other people, things other people, ex it's a distillation. I was really going for something that felt true, but to get to that truth, lots of things had to be stripped away and it had to be simplified and also to get to the to the uh, tone of the piece, which was, I wanted it to be funny and sad, you know, that was also a big balancing act. What had to be stripped away and how much of that was a result of the collaboration that you talk of that's intrinsic to film? Wow, what had to be stripped away? I mean, um, so, uh, uh, it, the time period had to be condensed. Um, so, uh, you know, in reality, probably this whole thing stretched over, you would have to recast these girls a number of times. I didn't want to have to do that. Um, Especially since one was your daughter and she might not have been <laughs> pleased. Yeah, she would have been very una unhappy. <laughs> but I, um, so I had, so what had to be, I mean, also just, I couldn't go to New York. We couldn't go to New York, you know, I couldn't go shoot anything in New York. So um, I couldn't have... South Station in Boston, where we spent a lot of time picking my mother up. There were just a lot of things that sort of, just because we're making a film um, uh, in 2013 is when we shot it, and trying to evoke the period. Uh, there's no Harvard Square, I mean, our home away from home. Uh, Harvard Square isn't really there anymore the way it was, um, and we couldn't suit there anyway. So. Um, I just, I mean, there are a lot, I just had fewer characters, you know, it's, it's a, I had to simplify it to its essence, I guess. I was trying to get to something essential. Did making this film change your perception of your childhood at all? Uh, it did. Well, it changed my perception of me myself. Um, it did change my perception of my childhood because I, I was, so I started writing it because my kids were growing up in this time where I feel like everything is, is terrifying. You know, it's like they can't walk outside. They can't do it. I feel like they're going to, uh, any choice you make, they're doomed. <laughs> so I was reflecting on my own childhood and thinking, wait, I, I think I got a lot out of all these kind of tough things that I went through. Um, and maybe I don't need to worry about my kids surviving or anything. Maybe I just have to say, you'll figure it out. You'll be okay. You know, whatever comes your way, it may be hard. I mean, a lot of the issues in this film I wrestled with for years, but I, and I'm still a work in progress and I'm still wrestling with things, but, but I did feel like I learned how to do that. That's very critical. I learned how to be interested in people, and I, uh, I had a lot of compassion. My father, both my parents were very compassionate, and they had a good sense of humor, and these are all the little things that I got. And um, so, I, I, yes, I guess it did. I, I felt like, I guess I'm lucky to have that childhood. <laughs> I don't know.